A freaky eater is someone who takes an eating habit to an extreme. 26-year-old Daniel covers everything he eats in maple syrup. Pizza, lasagna, Mexican food, Chinese food, whatever kind of food, I'm gonna put it on. Daniel dumps two cups of maple syrup a day onto his food. His eating habits are catching up to him. With diabetes running in Daniel's family. My whole family's trying to change Daniel, but nothing's worked. It's imminent, he could be next. With just one week of intense therapy. Oh my lord. Can experts Dr. Mike Dow and JJ Virgin stop Daniel from drowning in maple syrup? Or will he pour his life down the drain? It sounds like it's your drug. You shouldn't even talk to me like that, you know? My brother Daniel is a freaky eater. 26-year-old Daniel drenches all his food in maple syrup. I got my syrup going. I put maple syrup on everything that I eat. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Pizza, lasagna, Mexican food, Chinese food, whatever kind of food, I'm gonna put it on. Each and every day, Daniel downs more than two cups of maple syrup. That amounts to nearly 2,000 calories a day from maple syrup alone. I love the sweetness, and I'll eat every last drop on that plate. Mmm. I lived a normal childhood, played sports, played baseball. My grandmother was a big part of my life, and she was like a second mother to me. She used to make waffles on the weekends. That was my first memory of uh, eating maple syrup. Around seven years old, I was really consistently putting maple syrup on food daily. Ever since then, it just grew. Maple syrup does make me feel good. It makes me feel safe when I eat it, because, you know, I think about my grandmother. Baseball was very important in my life lived night and day for it. I thought I had a great shot at making the professional level, but I blew my shoulder out playing college ball, and it just didn't work out. I miss baseball in my life. It's a void too, just like my grandmother. I'm in a crossroad right now. I need to do something with my life. I run seven days a week, three to four miles. If I kept eating maple syrup without working out, I'd have a problem. But younger brother David believes that Daniel's obsession with maple syrup is a big problem already. His eating habits are catching up to him. He's not as active as he was. He's not as energetic as he was. The maple syrup is taking its toll on his body. A little tired right now, man. I need to wake up with my, my syrup and eggs. My family, we do have a history of diabetes, and that's a concern. My whole family's trying to change Daniel, but nothing's worked. You ever think about cutting it out? No, no. I'm gonna eat a lot of maple syrup now and in the future. Maple syrup is a part of my life and it's not going anywhere. I'm not changing for anybody. Worried about the health effects of Daniel's maple syrup addiction, his brother David has called in Freaky Eaters experts, Dr. Mike Dow and JJ Virgin. They will attempt to change his eating habits with a week of intense therapy. Daniel. Yes. How are you? Hello. We're sent by your brother David. I'm Dr. Mike Dell. I'm a psychotherapist specializing in disordered eating and addictive behaviors. JJ Virgin. Hello, ma'am. I'm a certified nutrition specialist and a certified health and fitness specialist. Your brother tells us you have a little maple syrup problem. Ever had a day in your life without maple no. syrup? I was mad that Dr. Dow and JJ knew some of my personal business. Let me see here. What, what do we got in this bag? So, uh, this maple syrup here. How long does this last you? About uh, four to five days. When somebody eats this much of any one thing, that tells me that it is an addiction. It sounds like it's your drug. It sounds no. like it's, it's... I, I won't go that far, sir. I don't even know you, and you shouldn't even talk to me like that, you know? It's just something that I do. I don't like anybody telling me about my business, and maple syrup is my business. Do you think you have a problem uh, being addicted to maple syrup? No, I don't. He was defensive, angry. That defensiveness is a form of denial, which is one of the hallmarks of addiction. Do you consider yourself to be fit at this point? I consider myself in good shape. Daniel says he feels healthy, but I'm actually afraid that he is paving the way towards obesity and ultimately diabetes. I'd like to sort of see what Yeah, could we goes see you, see you in action meal. with this? I mean, are you open to that? I'm open to that. I invited Dr. Dow and JJ over because they mentioned my brother's name. But as of right now, I'm not changing for anybody. You lead the way. All right. It's pretty clear to me that Daniel does not think that he has a problem. I was relieved that he even let us come into his apartment. 
we really have our work cut out for us. I eat, you know, three uh, balanced meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Daniel put a hefty dose of maple syrup on his cereal. It looked like a good quarter of a cup. You're obviously into your health, and then basically really sabotage it all with maple syrup. Yeah, I don't see it that way. If Daniel isn't willing to view this habit as bad, there's no way he's going to change. If we could show you that this is really getting in the way of you being ultimately as fit and healthy as you could be. Well, show me the evidence. In order to get Daniel to be motivated to make any sort of change, we have to really shock him because he doesn't think he has a problem. So come with us. OK. All right, come on. Daniel has been pouring maple syrup on everything he eats since childhood and doesn't believe he has a problem. Well, show me the evidence. We have to really shock him into saying, wow, this is a problem. We needed a storage unit because okay. we needed enough room. It's essential that we communicate to Daniel just how much sugar he is eating. Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, my lord. That is a lot of sugar right there. We used a storage container to stash 912 pounds of sugar, two years worth of what he's eating. Yeah, so 2,000 calories a day of sugar that you're downing. Mm. A man should have no more than nine teaspoons of added sugars a day. <laughs> Guess how many you do? More than that. 14 times that 14 amount. 14 times, okay. 135 teaspoons. I've never seen that much sugar ever in my life, but I'm not gonna change because JJ showed me some sugar. Do you have any history of diseases in your family, heart disease, diabetes, stroke? You know, I do. My grandpa died of diabetes. Diabetes runs in your family? Oh, uh, yes. Do you know what this does to diabetes? Sugar turns on these diabetes genes for you. Uh-huh. And is that a concern here? No, I'm just so used to my habit. That's what I like. Daniel doesn't see that his everyday behavior is leading him down that same road that took his grandfather from him. Let's yep. go look at one more thing. All right. All right. Come with us. Daniel didn't seem to be affected at all by what sugar could do to his health. So I knew we needed to show him something else. Oh my gosh. That's a lot of syrup. We've set up two years worth of Daniel's maple syrup habit. 104 gallons of syrup. I was shocked because there's a lot of maple syrup in front of me right now. We actually want you to pour every single one into that trash. I was hesitant. Damn, man. Yeah. 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 Say, right. say well, goodbye. Come on. I was really thinking they were trying to make me mad. Why are you throwing this much away? One down. I don't know why you guys are wasting this much syrup. That's crazy. It's trash. Trash. Trash, <laughs> which is what you've been putting in your body. Daniel is angry because this is his jug of choice, and he wants it. That's a lot of syrup. You know, that could Keep be going. used. Used for what? To make some for my food. What, the, what do you mean for what? This is not food. I can put it on a food and make a good thing bad. It's increasing your risk for diabetes. It's um, causing you to lay down fat around your gut. You're totally dependent on it. What is it you like? Well, that's good to me. So that's all I care about. Daniel got progressively madder and madder during the whole process. You guys are killing me, man. Seriously, you guys are killing me. The last one. You look pissed. It didn't really affect him. There was that tough guy attitude that said, so what? I'm still not going to change. When you pour that into your body, it's like treating your body like a trash can. Well, I don't see it that way. Yet. Even after the shock therapy, Daniel still is pushing back. Come with us. Come with us. You. I'm not really sure if we're going to be able to get through to the sky. In order to move forward, JJ tries another course of action taking Daniel to a fitness center. I wanted a little one-on-one -on -one session with Daniel where I could really get serious with him about his health. When people eat a high sugar diet, they store more fat around their waistline. That puts you at risk for heart disease, diabetes, for stroke. I had Daniel take his shirt off because I thought there was a bit of a gut line, and I was right. OK, go ahead, step on. So the cool thing with the scales, it's going to tell us not just your weight, mm -hmm. but your body fat. The real shocker came when I looked at his body composition. You have 42 pounds of fat on you. 42 pounds of fat, that's a lot of fat. 21% body fat. 
you should be sitting there honestly, eight, nine percent body fat. I gave Daniel this information and I think he heard it, but I wanted him to really feel just how out of shape he really was. So we're gonna do soccer sit-ups. A soccer sit-up is an especially hard abdominal exercise. You're gonna come up and down, got it? Yeah. All right, here we go. All the way up, come on, up, up, let's go. When JJ made me do sit-ups, I knew that I have a problem. I know, these are harder than they look, huh? Keep pace with me. Daniel's endurance was pathetic. We're not done, we're not done. Up, come on. Well, I guess that's so much for that maple syrup energy. It's not really working for you, is it? What is that, what is that? We're not done. Daniel didn't even make it a minute. He was sweating, he was struggling. <sighs> it kind of made me a little mad that she beat me in sit-ups. So, you're seeing that maybe the maple syrup isn't giving you the body that you really want? Yeah, I want my energy, though. I feel very confident that we've made some big strides, but Daniel's still not fully invested that maple syrup's really hurting him. Oh, my gosh. Faced with the enormity of his maple syrup addiction, 104 gallons of syrup. And his fitness shortcomings. Oh. Daniel is still not fully convinced that he needs to make changes to his diet. <sighs> Hoping to encourage Daniel further, JJ wants to give him some alternatives to maple syrup. No one's saying, hey, you can't have maple syrup. What I'm doing is saying, what other things could we add in? I picked some sauces that had some sweetness to them, but also some good nutrition. Where your maple syrup serving has 32 grams of sugar, these have, they average about four grams of sugar. Right now, JJ wants me to eat healthier, but if it doesn't smell good, I'm not gonna eat it. What we'll start with is yellow curry. This is particularly good on chicken. It just smells weird. I don't, I don't think I like this. I'm not gonna do that. Hmm. Want you to give it a little taste? Uh, no. No way. No way, Jose. Daniel is really stubborn and very resistant to any kind of change. This one is honey mustard. I can already tell I, I can like to smell yeah, that you one. can't smell it from over there. You're not playing. You can't tell me, sitting over there, that you can smell this. What's it smell I don't like? want to eat any of those things. Try it. JJ is giving me that look like, come on, buddy. You need to try something different. Here we go. Dijon mustard or whatever. Honey hot mustard. Oh, uh, no. It's just, I don't like any of these. How do you know? I don't. This one is roasted peanuts and cashews okay, and honey. Okay, I already honey. I'm not gonna like this. It's good. I'm thinking I've made progress. He liked it. What'd you tell me before you tasted that? I don't like it. Hold that bad. So that is peach salsa. I kind of like that. Is there mango in there? All right. That's peach, although mango would be another one we could do. That is good. Now Daniel has some alternatives that have an eighth of the sugar of his maple syrup that he can use to push maple syrup out of the way. If all you did was say, you know, I'll add these in and I'll take my syrup down 25%, it would make a huge difference. I'm gonna consider it. I will try these sauces again, but nothing's gonna take the place of maple syrup. Dr. Dow and JJ make one final push and take Daniel to see exactly where his maple syrup habit could lead. John, this is Daniel. Nice to Hello. meet you. Hi, John. Diabetes is a very real possibility for Daniel. If Daniel becomes diabetic and his kidneys fail, something that is very common in diabetes, he will have to be on dialysis for the rest of his life. This is Michael. Hi, Hello, Daniel. Mike. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We wanted to show him somebody who was young, who had kidney failure, and now he spends three days a week, four hours at a time, at this dialysis clinic. Mikey, how old are you? I'm 36. When I found out how young Mikey was, that was scary. You look young and healthy. Well, that's because of dialysis, because I wasn't very healthy before I had this machine clean my blood on a regular basis. We wanted Daniel to understand that by the time he started to feel bad, it could be too late for him. 
Danny, you look a little freaked out. I don't want to see this. I realized that that could be me. I definitely do not want to sit in that chair. Does that hurt? Yeah. This is the easy part. But when I'm not here, that's when it's really hard. That's when I have to exceptionally manage everything I do, I eat. What advice would you have for Daniel knowing that Daniel's eating about 2,000 calories a day of maple syrup with a family history of diabetes? The sooner you can make a change, the better. It's hard to watch this. You know, I could be in this situation you know, a couple years from now. I don't even know how I would adjust to this. My daughter's type 1 diabetic. If she had 2,000 calories worth of maple syrup, she dropped dead. She doesn't have a choice as to what she can have in her diet. What do you think your daughter, who had no choice, would say to Daniel, who has a choice? Why are you throwing it away? This is a wake-up call. There's really no more excuses because I've had the knowledge right here in front of me. You don't want to end up diabetic. You can lose your eyesight, lose a leg. We can go around the room. I can show you how many amputees I have here because of type 2 diabetes. You look like you're actually scared now. Something to worry about. You know, I have a bad habit. You just said, I have a bad habit. I do. This is the turnaround that I needed to see from Daniel. And you can see where the bad habit's going to take you, because really, it's not an if. It's a when for you. You're pulling the trigger on a loaded gun. It's not too late, but you need to do something. This was a really rough thing to take Daniel through. Good luck to you, man. Nice to meet you, sir. But we had to do it. And I feel like now he'll listen, and we can change his life with him. A dialysis center was the key motivator in getting Daniel to realize the health risks he faces if he continues his maple syrup diet. The sooner you can make a change, the better. Now, Dr. Dow and JJ are leaving Daniel on his own for four days to commit to a new diet. I do plan to change. Still using the maple syrup a little bit, I see. Yeah, I'm, I'm still using it. I'm cutting back maple syrup by 50%. I'm drizzling it because it's the small steps that are going to lead to the huge ones. Slowly but Not surely. Much, huh? But by day two, Daniel is experiencing severe withdrawal. My body's getting tired. I'm losing energy. Every meal is just difficult to handle because I want to just smother everything with maple syrup. But I saw the huge picture. I am determined to make a change. On day four, Daniel tries one of JJ's alternative sauces instead of maple syrup. I love that piece also. I love the sweetness. It's good. Daniel's been on his own for a few days. JJ and I are very eager to come back and see how he's done. How's it going? The first day was, was really tough. My body wants the uh, maple syrup. You are going through a withdrawal period from all that sugar. His body has learned to need maple syrup. But if Daniel can get through this, he's going to start to feel better and better. Daniel, when we met you, you were eating a gallon of maple syrup a week. How much are you eating now? Quarter, at least of a gallon. That's pretty fantastic. Daniel has cut down his maple syrup consumption by 75%. For Daniel, that's huge. JJ and Dr. Dow take Daniel to a youth baseball field for one final activity. What's going on? Nice to meet you. How you doing? Baseball is something that Daniel can embrace in his life to make him feel good so he doesn't need so much maple syrup. We found a kid's baseball team that Daniel can serve as the assistant coach. Hey, guys. I want to introduce you to Coach Daniel. He's going to be helping us out today. Hi, Coach Daniel! <laughs> it was a great feeling when the kids said, Coach Daniel, I was very happy. Nice. Hey, nice hitting. Going up the middle, that's good. Daniel was in his element out there coaching the kids. It was magical to watch. Nice. nice. Wow. I think you found your calling over here. You know, this is like a whole nother well, yeah. side of you, too. Well, of course, I'm not going to punk a little kid. Oh. All those balls that were up a couple days ago, yeah. balls they're, are down. They're all tumbling down. <laughs> well, knew? they're little kids. You know, the kids make me happy. After the baseball practice, we set up a barbecue lunch for the kids. And how about you, Daniel? <laughs> I'll take some uh, beef. OK. We have one final test for Daniel here. And how about this? You want some of this on top? Uh, I'm good right now. I'm not going to eat syrup right it's now. It's your choice. I know. It is my choice, but I, I'm Coach Daniel today. 
Right. Well, I think you should be Coach Daniel. Stay all the Coach time. Daniel, you know, for your life, because this Coach Daniel looks yeah. happy. Daniel passed the ultimate test with flying colors, and it's clear to me that he is on his way, and he really doesn't need us anymore. Well, thank you. You know, it's because of your help. Our pleasure. Saying no to maple syrup is something that I did today. I'm proud of it. Thank you, doctor. See you, Coach JJ. Daniel. Our pleasure. All right. All right, guys. Again. All right. I'm going to change. There's no doubt about it in my mind. I'm definitely going to change. You did a really good job today. Daniel has exceeded my wildest expectations. Here is a guy who is not willing to make even the smallest change to a guy who is now happy, who has better goals for himself, and has cut down his maple syrup by over 75 percent. Have you guys ever hit a home run before? I have. I have. I have who has? I know that Daniel's going to keep this up and just continue to build on his success.